December of 2011. That would be 10 years later right now, right? Correct. Okay. It's telling me it was like nine years ago, the first video, which I don't think is right. Maybe you'd put it out like December 24th. And uh, so it hasn't quite hit that 10 year mark. It's the 16th. I don't oh, think it's we're this. off so by it's, like a day. It's a day later. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Yo, almost to the day, 10 years later, filming the retro of this shoe that I performance reviewed Fucking A. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got something special, real special, especially if you're a LeBron fan, a Kanye fan, a Jay-Z fan, because this guy right here, these bad boys, LeBron 9s, the Watch the Thrones, okay? This thing right here was an exclusive that never released way back when they originally dropped the model, not this particular colorway. And it was an exclusive that was only available for a select few, and now it's for everybody. That's awesome. Like, I don't know why people hate on this dude so much. It's like all of the rare LeBrons that people have loved over the last decade or two have been coming back out in mass quantities as GRs. Isn't that what sneakerheads want? Or are we just in a, a realm where they say one thing and do another? Or are we just overpopulated with fake sneakerheads that just buy things because they think that they're worth money so they can put them on GOAT or StockX or whatever? Like, I don't understand what the f is going on anymore. What is a little bit of everything, Alex? <sighs> oh no. It's lopsided, folks. <laughs> but anyways, these guys right here are seeing not only a retro return, but this colorway is releasing for the very first time to the public. I think that that's fucking awesome. We grabbed our pair from ID for Shoes. They're an eBay seller, 100% authentic. I've been using them for years, about as long as I've been, like, I, I don't know if I grabbed, I did not. I grabbed, I think, my first pair from Shoe Palace. But I've been buying from ID for Shoes for about 10 years, so it's been a long ass time. And uh, these guys are available right now over there. We'll leave a link down below in the description box if anybody was curious or interested. And before we get into a full breakdown of these guys, we do have a quick word from our Wear Testers Discord community. Our community actually helps fund this channel, so that's why we're able to do reviews just like this, including the performance ones for you guys for free. So that's basically how we pay for the product and all of that kind of good stuff. It was funny because when I, I rewatched this video, it was the video or the time frame when I had the autofocus that had no external mic. And so like all you heard was the lens going and it was like a typewriter and stuff. Awful videos, but I can only afford to roll in the revenue or whatever we make per video back into the channel so often because we weren't really making anything back then. And uh, it was just interesting to see that because nowadays we got the mics, we got two cameras, we got great lenses, all that stuff. It's just so weird to see where we were or where I was way back then and all that stuff till right about now. But uh, our Discord community is fantastic and we give things away. This is our 12 days of Kicksmas. This is gonna be the giveaway today. Not this particular pair, these are mine, but uh, we are giving a pair away. Not in my size, by the way, none of the giveaways. I shouldn't say none of them. A lot of them are not in my size. We actually grab shoes from all sizes. We post them up. It's a raffle entry, no payment or anything, because the payment is how you get into the Discord in general. And we give away multiple shoes per month, but in the month of December, we go a little bit extra and we give at least 12 away. Now, as far as these guys are concerned, the traction pattern on these things are uh, just like they were originally way back when. This shoe originally released during LeBron's tenor in Miami. So back then he actually switched from the 23 to the number six, which he coincidentally has done just recently for this year. I don't know if he's trying to boost his jersey sales or whatever, but you know, that's just what it is. That's what's on the outsole right here. They actually made a bunch of sixes that go into each other to form a chain link pattern. I was also doing a little bit of extra research on these right before we got started on everything and it was so cool to see the original Nike official press stuff where there's like the image and pointing to everything, calling out like what things are. And they still do it every once in a while. They just did it recently with the uh, the last LeBron release and uh, came with a card and everything like that. That one was a little cooler though because it was a sketch. This one was still just as cool though. I, I love that launch colorway too, the black and reds. Those were fantastic. But anyways, the outsole is exactly the same. I think it's really cool because there's a lot of things in here, a lot of storytelling and all that stuff. Like if you were to put these together, this actually was a thing that they did on a lot of the old LeBron the lion's hidden in here. Uh, you just see the main popping out on the outrigger section, but he's back there. You've got lots of flex screws, and in that flex groove right there, you can actually see the Phylon midsole poking out, which is awesome. It's an injected Phylon midsole, so it's got a little bit of a fluffiness to it, even though it's very thin, so it's not gonna be like super noticeable, but it's 
better than nothing. In the back right there, you can also see where there's more injected phylon. That's actually bottom loaded into what they used to call the dog bone unit, because uh, this guy right here is shaped kind of like a, a nine or a six, depending on which way you turn it. That's where the air unit is. It's fairly similar to what we just recently saw on the witnesses. It was the witness X, and we do a ton of videos. So while that air unit was a little bit thinner than this one right here, uh, this one has a little bit more max air in there. It's still a very similar unit and still has similar coverage. This one, like I was saying, just has a little bit more air in there. Uh, on top of that, again, it's injected foam underneath and on top. It makes these units way more comfortable so they don't feel quite like your dad or your grandpa's Air Max unit. It feels more modern than that. Now in the forefoot, there's Zoom Air. I believe this was the first LeBron where I really compared it to a penny because before this, we had full length air. Before that, also full length air. So the sevens and the eights. Before that, they actually used a lot of Zoom Air in his early models from the Zoom generation all the way up to the sixes. I believe the sixes might've been full length. So the sevens is where they really started implementing more air and in this one is when they started doing both so zoom in the front air in the back i remember it feeling a little slappy a little stiff at first so this one right here is an interesting setup because the lateral side the midsole itself is exposed the medial side is actually double lasted and on top of that i believe this carbon fiber glass-based carbon fiber shank might extend to the forefoot i can't remember exactly i was looking on nikelebron.net if you're a lebron fan you already probably know about this place but uh, basically he's like the biggest lebron fan that i know and i believe that the images that they have for, I think it was like the creation of the LeBron 9 PS or postseason or elite, they were showing deconstructed versions of these and there was a spring plate all the way in the front. I remember these being extremely stiff in the forefoot and not like it. The materials were ultra modern for their time. I don't know if they have like stood the test of time because they still use this stuff and they just don't use it as much as they used to. Uh, but basically we have what used to be new hyperfuse construction at the time along with what used to be new flywire. This is kind of like that second gen flywire so skin fuse i don't love this it's very stiff but i will say that this is a pretty shoe like i think the lebron nines when i first saw them i did not like the way that they looked aesthetically but it's one of those models that has grown over time with me personally like there's a few colorways of these that i think are fantastic i remember the griffey one was hella clean the miami they're like green and orange back then i thought that they were nasty but when i see them now i'm like man those were dope but the collar area of the shoe just features this kind of like woven pattern this is where i feel like they got that from the uh they placed it on the 13s i believe where it was foam posit it was kind of like a callback to this one this one is not foam it's just like a weave pattern not quite carbon fiber but it looks a lot like it and then my favorite feature of these guys you can't really see it because of this big thing but these gold flaps right here the lockdown wings these were fantastic i wish that they put these on every performance shoe. maybe not everyone but like I, if it was on a lot of them i wouldn't mind whatsoever these things really draw your heel right into the back of the shoe great containment in that area i thought it was a fantastic feature also something that's not really a performance feature but i really like it is this stupid little pull tab man i don't know why it just looks so cool it's made out of plastic it goes all the way down it's just i don't know what it is i just think it looks dope i do remember the tongues there's some areas where all the seams Meat. I don't know if they're gonna be able to see that, but basically where the liner kind of like meets the rest of the black material, there's a lot of heavy stitching right there. And I remember these, especially with the lockdown wings yanked up and like enclosed around your foot, pushes those knots into your skin and the softer your skin gets with more playtime, more moisture. Ooh, I think the scars are still there. I don't know why they disappear, but they're there. The insole is the same as what it used to be. It's ortholite, it's nothing special. Uh, you can remove that quickly and put in one of our move insoles. You got the game day, game day pro. This one right here, it's got plenty of art support for your actual foot. A lot of people were asking like, why would you use a TPU plate on something like this and then also have something inside? It's because this is directly for your foot. The one that's on the shoe is for the shoe so that the shoe doesn't over twist. Now, as far as the sizing is concerned, this is the main thing that I totally spaced on when I ordered these. I ordered these in my true size, size nine, and they don't fit. They are very tight. So I would recommend for anybody, whether you're playing in them or wearing them casually, go up a half a size. You're going to thank me later. If you've already owned this shoe, you probably already know about it. So like this is nothing new for those people. But for newcomers, if the LeBron 9 is going to be a first time for you, you're definitely going to want to go up half a size right off the bat. One thing that I forgot to mention, though, one of my favorite features is actually inside the shoe. All of this cool like padding. I just really like it. Like it's, it feels like interior armor. It feels like something like Batman would have mm. underneath his suit, you know? Know what I mean so do you remember these at all no 
Okay, well, that's not surprising. <laughs> I do have thoughts on this particular pair, though. This thing, it's, one. It's excessive. It's heavy, too. It looks like the guy in Mario Brothers that slams down. What's his name? Oh, yeah, those uh, those spiky guys. Yeah, I tried to look up the name real quick. And they I have pillows of those yes. things. Those are so cool. But also, uh, inside the box, like, I try and grab any receipts, just, you know, for work and stuff. And it just talked about how, like, this is a limited edition pair it's for collectibles, yada, yada, yada. This lace lock thing is not to be played in, so if you decide to play with the shoes, make sure you remove them. I can't even imagine what would happen to your foot or the guy who gets hit with this thing. I could imagine Draymond Green wearing these against LeBron and doing that stupid thing that he did where he kicked him in the nuts. <laughs> and just being like, watch the throne, bro. So yeah, I could just see that happening, which would suck. Oof, man, that would be awful. But anyways, that pretty much takes care of it for these guys. Again, this is LeBron 9 Retro. The launch colorway, surprisingly, is one of the most rare shoes within the LeBron line. So I think that's really cool. Again, you can grab them right now from ID for Shoes. Link is going to be in the description box below. And one last reminder, this is uh, today's give. I don't know what day it is, but uh, whatever day it is within our 12 days of uh, Kicksmas. I think we're at day 10. We're almost over. Double so, digits. Uh, yeah, so these are what is going to be given away via raffle style, even though it's not, you know what I mean? It's just how you enter. Everybody wins when you're part of our Discord community. So even after the Kicksmas thing is over, like I said, we do at least two shoes or more a month that we give away. So we give back to our community as they are the ones, again, that help fund this channel. So in appreciation for that, uh, it's super great. And yeah, but with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time, guys, have a good one. And in case I didn't say, the link to the Discord is down below and in the description box. Or it's weartesters.com slash join. It's very easy, yes, but everybody's going to ask anyways. Not everybody, but people that just don't know. Clearly, because they don't know, which is why they're asking.